Hello, my name is Christina Forbes, wife of seriously injured worker Lauren Forbes. As you've seen by the videos um, earlier today, I was um, <coughs> talking about uh, permanent disability and uh, your pensions. So what this video though is about is loss of earnings and um, that lovely little term that workers' compensation likes to use, two special words, so exceptional. So given the circumstances, what is so exceptional? I would assume if uh, the injured worker hasn't gone back to work yet, or, or at all. <laughs> so let's go over and see if Lauren qualifies for loss of earnings. So, medically plateaued, 2006 apparently, September 4th, not even a year after the injury, full year, they've already deemed him as medically plateaued. Um, from there, where was I trying to go with that? Oh yeah, okay, so from there, you know, vocational rehabilitation, planning, pain program, what is he going to do for work? Okay, so they tried a few things, as you know, in other videos, um, he did, they tried um, uh, graphic design, that did not work, uh, photo finishing, but that wouldn't bring him up to his earnings, and so that was uh, no-go, uh, greenhouse management, um, that was a no-go given, you know, the requirement, physical requirements of the job. Um, <coughs> AutoCAD and GIS, so Global Information Systems, uh, of course that was um, a no-go on that. Uh, last but not least, uh, the fifth thing was uh, drafting. Haven't heard anything back about the drafting. Uh, talked to Sal, wonderful guy at North Island College. Uh, he phoned Lauren a while back, about a week ago, and just let him know that he actually has about two years worth of upgrading in order to even get into an entry level drafting program. Because the, the drafting, um, it, you have to further your education past the entry level. You can't get a job <laughs> with entry level drafting. So, um, anyways, uh, I'm not too sure what's going on with the drafting. I guess he requires a couple years of upgrading for that. WorkSafe BC has until the 27th of July to, to make their decision on, on what they're going to do. According to the permanent uh, functional evaluation and uh, the letter from uh, pensions, um, his adjudicator for the disabilities department or someone in there is... Um, currently contemplating whether or not Lauren is entitled to lost earnings. Um, as Dr. Bland had stated, and we have stated uh, since uh, the injury, Lauren has not gone back to work at all, under uh, any means. Um, so, <coughs> he's tried five, they've tried five different options to get him back into the workforce. All have failed. Uh, I'm not too sure about the drafting yet though, so we won't count that one out. But and uh, he hasn't gone back to, to work in any sort of thing, so I guess, technically, Lauren meets their so exceptional rules. He meets all the, the requirements for getting loss of earnings, which would be, you know, 90% of, of whatever he's currently getting. I think that's how that works. Um, which uh, which it would be a good thing because then we could review the loss of earnings because we had to drop, um, like we reviewed his uh, loss of earnings um, a few times, but we had to drop some things and his wage loss was one of them in order to continue on with the WCAT for his CRPS. So, um, you know, we can review some things after that and the wage loss and, and open up that again, which would be a good thing. So. Um, but, you know, as with everything with WorkSafe BC, you don't count on fuck all except for having a sore ass. Um, <coughs> one of the things that I did forget to mention on the last uh, video there with the, the permanent disability awards and stuff like that is how they kind of break it down. And I, I just really want to show that. It's, I feel it's kind of important. Um, 
in your pensions package you'll get a permanent functional impairment calculation um, pardon me permanent functional impairment calculation and this is just what the the gent from ATF feels Lauren's injuries are worth and of course WorkSafe BC feels that's probably a bit too much and we're just going to devalue that a bit so you know they just go on to a lot of just basic jargon that you know your average person wouldn't be able to make heads or tails out of all just kind of medical stuff there percentage calculated impairment now and keep in mind um, other than these two times Dr. Bland has never seen Lauren doesn't know Lauren on a regular basis didn't know what he looked like before he's seen him you know with two broken arms uh, so what um, I don't really understand is you know how someone that doesn't really know you can kind of group all of your things into percentages really I mean it's really sad so uh, yeah it's that's the the tonality of that little thing so let's get back into to loss of earnings because workers uh, compensation and particularly WorkSafe BC hasn't given out much for loss of earnings in the last few years they don't like to give out loss of earnings to people at all I think we've had in the last uh, two years or something like that um, 34 or, or I, I, you know feel free to correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure I am but I know in the last two years it's been under a hundred people that have received a loss of earnings for their for their permanent uh, serious injury and disability which is really really sad <laughs> really really sad because the way, the way loss of earnings goes is if they're able to get you back into some sort of employment let's say a gas jockey but you're only making nine dollars an hour and you used to make thirty eight dollars an hour they've got to see that they pay that difference to get you back up to your previous um, earnings post injury b before your injury so that's a lot of money to make up and they don't really like to do that for people they'd rather push you off into permanent functional impairment disabilities and um, loss of function mobilities and so on and so forth like that and avoid the loss of earnings entirely but what do you do with someone like John or Lauren or you know the new gentleman that's posting and numerous other people that haven't gone back to any sort of employment nothing that have left with well a whole fifty six dollar pension or a five hundred and sixty six dollar pension you know uh, it's it's really it's uh, it's very very sad that uh, you know this is how how their system is built and it's built just like that and it's I don't even know I don't know I'm not like I said in the other videos I'm not educated at all really and and there's so many of you that I see on the Canadian injured workers uh, forum and stuff like that that are just have you guys have so much to say so you're so educated you've been doing this for for years and years and years and years if you've got pieces of information or uh, something that maybe might help me um, with my videos or something that you would maybe like me to mention or that I'm maybe not getting correctly um, but you don't want to to you know get your voice out there um, please feel free to email me any sort of information or something that you'd maybe like to talk about in regards to to what I've just talked about in the last few videos um, I know the the way the pension work is is very um, tricky they've got a lot of catch 22s in the workers compensation system little little bits that just keep you kind of chasing your tail like a dog it's it's um, very confusing and so you know I, I know I'm, I'm not the most educated person out there and there's some of you out there that are just you've got so much to say um, you know you got any questions or comments please post they're very important it helps with the ratings of viewings the pages where they go I'm running at the 10 minute mark I've done six videos today so I'm, I'm done for today uh, what I am going to do though is this the 27th of July creeps along we're gonna keep you posted and we'll see what goes on so thank you very much from the Forbes house you guys have an absolutely lovely day and, and please get your comments out there email me whatever you want to do thank you bye